Hey everybody, people were asking me if the Super Tower of Nintendo Power would actually work, and I didn't know, so I thought I'd do some tests and show you what I found out here. So, uh, step one, does the Game Boy camera work with the Super Game Boy? It absolutely does. Booting it up here, downloads uh, Border off the cartridge, so that tells you that um, it shipped with um, built-in support, right? Like that Border is meant for Super Game Boy, it's stored on the Game Boy camera, so that's cool. Now, things get interesting when we go a little deeper, so I'm hooking up the Game Genie here. And I could swear to you, before I started filming this, I thought it worked, but I can't get it to work anymore. So I'm either remembering wrong or something's going on. Um, I believe it's, it basically crashes when it's trying to download the border image that I showed you. So you see I got to the Game Genie screen. Now I can get to the Game Boy, uh, the Super Game Boy screen. And now it's trying to load the camera. And it should get a little further than this. Yeah, it gets to about here. And then it just seems to hang. And I have three theories about why, or hypothesis about why it doesn't work. Number one, uh, the cartridges could be dirty. I cleaned all three of them and they were quite dirty and there's just more points of failure here. That could be one reason. Another reason could be power draw. I may have too many things going on here for what um, power can actually be supplied from the Super Nintendo. Another one is the um, Super Game Boy has these outer pins. Uh, it's been a long time since I looked up what the pinout was on these. I forget what they're for. But you see the Game Genie doesn't have them. So if there's anything, uh, per, it does seem to me it's crashing when it's downloading the border, but if, if it's anything related to that, it might be like literally some pins are not connected. Here's the floppy drive. This floppy drive is meant for uh, pirating games. Now, I hadn't used this in a while, so I forgot how it worked. I don't think this has a pass-through mode. It just gets you up here and it says insert a disk but I don't think there's any like button combination I can do to make it like just boot the cartridge. Uh, that's not what it's meant for, so I guess that's not too surprising. Um, lastly, let's talk about X-Band. So I'm gonna demo this on my Super Famicom because this is a Japanese X-Band, uh, which of course is a different cartridge shape, and I just haven't modified my North American Super Nintendo to take Japan cartridges. Um, but there is a problem with this too. Primarily, um, I also don't know if X-Band supports pass-through mode. Uh, it's meant for playing games online, like head-to-head -head using a modem. And uh, I don't read Japanese. I can't figure the user interface out, and I can't find any English to Japanese translations for X-Band online. So if anybody has... Whoa! <laughs> so if anybody has a... Um, English X-Band, if you know that you can pass through and just boot the game, please leave me a comment and tell me how, and I could demo that. But um, I'll kind of show you what I mean here. This has a pretty complicated interface, and I can't read any of it. So, no idea what that's saying. This looks like maybe modem settings. I don't know. Um, but yeah, see, I just, I just don't know how to actually launch a game. So potentially if someone could answer that for me, that'd be great. I'm going to go check the pinout for, uh, the outer pins on Super Nintendo and see if that has anything to do with why I can't get it to boot through the Game Genie. Although, like I said, I do swear the first time I plugged this in, I thought it booted. But maybe I'm just remembering wrong and I was just going Super Game Boy straight to the Nintendo. Anyway, hope that clears things up for you. Thanks.